The story continues with an elven girl appearing in Third Assault Garden. She realizes she's from a thousand years ago and notices the city is lifeless. Wondering what happened, she wears a dress from a shopping complex. The girl, introduced as Arl Curlesio, believes she's here for the goddess's rebirth. Discovering the land is moving, she sees a dragon carrying Leonis and others. Nefekes explains it's a human mode of transportation, recognizing Arl as the elven hero. Nefekes then introduces himself. Arl wonders how Nefekes knows her, thinking he might be from the past too. Nefekes says that he is. Nefekes reveals that he knows that Arl's here to destroy the goddess's vessel using Krasix, the evil slashing blade but he has a different objective from her. Arl thinks Nefekes might be the vessel's guardian. She attacks, but Nefekes disappears, leaving a void to deal with her. The story then returns to the present. In the present, Linus saves Rycelia from a void's attack using shadow magic. The void targets Linus, who blocks it but loses Elfine's drone. Linus attacks the void with fire but it has holy protection, resisting lower-level sorcery. Determined, Linus vows to show real sorcery. Meanwhile, Aelfine and others hear fighting sounds from Linus and Rycelia's direction. Aelfine realizes her drone is gone, and they head to check on them. Linus deflects void attacks, using a gravity spell to pin it down. The void frees itself, giving Linus time to cast a level 9 spell and simultaneously attack with a thunder spell, defeating the void. Linus goes to check up on Rycelia telling her that he managed to defeat the Void. He asks if she is hurt, and Rycelia tries to deny it, but Linus notices her injury. He mentions that recovering from an injury like this will take some time, even for a vampire's healing abilities. Linus then thinks they need to find a place to hide, as more Voids might come any minute. Soon, some shadowy figures arrive, bearing the mark of House Christian. Rycelia notices this, and one of them introduces himself as William Richmond, the head of the Order of House Christian. He mentions that he no longer possesses a physical body, but rushed to Rycelia's side as quickly as possible. Linus reflects on how souls of the dead with deep lingering regrets become trapped at the site of large battle, a common occurrence in the past but the first time he has encountered it in the present day. William states that Rycelia must have received their distress signal, and he explains they send that signal to issue a warning. He warns that the tragedy of six years ago might be repeated if things continue as they are, and the seventh assault garden may be overtaken by a stampede. He mentions that a void lord has appeared in these ruins, and they were only able to manifest themselves due to its influence. Linus thinks that this might be true, but nothing like this happened when Arl appeared in the seventh assault garden. William states that the void lord has merged with the city's power plant, and is amassing energy, bound to awaken before long. Rycelia suggests they check this out emphasizing the need for definitive proof if they want to evacuate the Seventh Assault Guard. Linus thinks that ghosts won't be considered a reliable source of information, and Rycelia tries to move, but her injury gets in the way. Linus tells her that she needs a place to rest for a while, and William suggests going to the mansion. In this case, he mentions that he has already arranged a car for Rycelia, and he took the liberty of making preparations when he found out that Rycelia would be coming here. The car then comes for Rycelia, and she is surprised that ghosts can drive cars. Linus states that it's possible, as a soul is formed from mana, and a car is a magical device. Linus then thinks that the ghosts are driving too slowly and summons his undead horses to pull the car instead. They then head to the mansion. Elfine and the others arrive where Linus and Rycelia were, but they notice that it's too quiet, thinking the battle might already be over. They then meet Arl, trying to help her as they see her as a survivor. However, Arl attacks them. Sakuya decides to face her since she is wielding a sword, and Arl assumes they must be friends of Nefekas. Regina asks if Arl is the one who sent the distress signal, but Arl attacks them, saying she doesn't have time for idle chit-chat. Sakuya crosses swords with Arl and manages to defeat her, noting that Arl would have won if she weren't injured. Arl then collapses due to her injury. The scene then shifts to Nefekas looking at the goddess, who starts to sing. Meanwhile, in the car, Rycelia is starting to feel better and asks Linus if she can drink some of his blood. Linus agrees, and Rycelia jumps onto him, sucking his blood. Linus worries that Rycelia might drink all his blood, attempting to use the mark of control to stop her. Before he can, Aelfine contacts Rycelia, and she lets go of Linus. Aelfine then asks Celia if she's okay after their confrontation with the Void earlier. Celia mentions they took down the Void, and she sustained a small injury, but it shouldn't interfere with their mission. Celia then reports something, suggesting that a Void Lord might be hiding in the city. The power plant might have been deactivated because the Void Lord is tampering with it. Aelfine thinks it makes sense, and Rycelia suggests regrouping to check it out. Aelfine decides they'll do that after treating the survivor they found. Rycelia is surprised they found a survivor, 
and Aelfine mentions they'll fill her in on the details later. Rhysilia tells them to rendezvous at the Crystalia estate. Aelfine ends the call, and Linus mentions he gave Rhysilia permission to drink his blood but not this much, or he'll pass out. Rhysilia apologizes, and Linus says he has something for her, a dress. He explains it can convert a vampire queen's mana into physical strength, exponentially increasing her power. However, it also consumes mana rapidly, so she should be careful using it. Linus stores the dress inside Rhysilia, and tells her to imagine herself wearing it to put it on. Rhysilia wonders why Linus is giving this to her now, and Linus mentions he doesn't think she's ready for it, but anything can happen from here on out, and he can't afford to let her get hurt again. Rhysilia realizes that Linus is worried for her safety, making him blush. He then gives Rhysilia some skeleton keychains, mentioning that they are good luck charms, and Rhysilia thanks him for them. In another place, Regina tends to Arl's wounds, and Sukuya asks for Arl's name. Arl introduces herself, and Sukuya wonders why she attacked them. Arl explains that she thought they were allies of her enemy, someone who controls monsters. Sukuya asks if Arl means voids, and Arl mentions the monster being absurdly large. Aelfine states that Arl's name isn't in the Third Assault Gardens database, and wonders where she came from. Arl counters by asking the same question. Aelfine explains they're an exploration team from the Seventh Assault Garden, sent to figure out why the city, which was destroyed six years ago, suddenly became functional again. She asks Arl why she's here, and Arl reveals she's here to vanquish the goddess. Aelfine doesn't understand, and Arl thinks the legend might have been forgotten over the years. Arl attempts to head out on her own, but her stomach growls. Sukuya shares some snacks, and Aelfine insists they can't leave Arl alone. Shur, who is watching them, wonders what Arl is doing in the future. Shirley explains that she was trained by the master swordsman Shard Dark, one of the six heroes. She assassinated several generals of the demon army and infiltrated Death Hold three times, even attempting to kill her master. Meanwhile, Nefekes states that the awakening of the goddess is drawing near. He discovers that the void he sent after the humans is dead and is surprised that a human managed to defeat it. He thinks it's time to take out the nuisances. Afterward, Linus and Rhysilia arrive at the Crystal Estate. Rhysilia is upset to see the estate in ruins. She goes inside the house, and Linus sits on a chair, finding it comfortable and reminiscent of the old days. Rhysilia checks out her mansion, recalling the memories of all the time she spent there. She then heads to her father's study and is heartbroken to see it reduced to rubble. William and the others use their magic to create an illusion of Rhysilia and her father reading books. Seeing the illusion of the fun times she had with her father makes Rhysilia smile. Nefekes then arrives, and Rhysilia wonders if he is a survivor. Nefekes can't believe that Rhysilia mistook him for a human and gets angry. He attacks Rhysilia with a fire spell, prompting her to shout, and her scream alerts Linus. It's revealed that Rhysilia is injured. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe.